In today's video, how long can you stay in a caloric deficit before metabolic adaptation? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss the length of time that you should say in a caloric deficit, and I'm assuming if you're doing that, it's for fat loss. So today's question comes from my Instagram direct message, and you guys have been killing it. I mean, I've been getting so many good questions. Actually, I'm having to kind of save them for other times because I don't want to kind of answer the same theme question day after day after day. This question, though, seems very relevant because we're at a time of the year where a lot of people are getting towards the end of their contest prep season. And so I want to talk about how long we can stay in a caloric deficit. Here's the question that came into me, right? So the question implies that if we stay in a caloric deficit for too long, that we may have some metabolic adaptations that are not reversible. Now, do I feel there is such a thing as being in a caloric deficit for too long? Yes. However, I believe as far as coaching goes, as far as my clients, as far as people being in a caloric deficit, all the negative adaptations that occur to that are reversible, okay? We can come out of a contest prep and get back to our normal state of being. However, if it's not done intelligently, it can get very bad. It can get to a place where we're storing a lot of body fat, not really maintaining a lean physique anymore, and struggling to even just enjoy the gym in the process because we put on more body fat, we're eating less. So there needs to be an intelligent approach. So do I have an answer for how long you should not be in a caloric deficit for? Yes, I do. Now, there are options. When you've been in a caloric deficit for a long time, if you're familiar with me and my videos, look up a few videos by me that talk about reverse dieting, diet breaks, or consecutive day refeeds. These are all strategies that will slow down the process of metabolic adaptation. If you think of metabolic adaptation as changes that are occurring, right, and they're kind of bringing our metabolic rate slower and slower, when you talk about things like a diet break, basically a refeed or multiple day refeeds, those things are going to allow us to no longer have a slower metabolism. In fact, it might speed it up for a day or two. The leaner the athlete, the leaner the person, I have seen some pretty cool things where we get into a phase where metabolic building occurs. I define that as when you're really lean and you start adding in calories and the body actually starts to get leaner. It's this very tiny window where our, I believe the thermic effect of food and our daily meat are increasing at a rate faster than we're adding calories. So there's this little window. But I only really notice that with people that are very overweight or very, very lean, okay? that we can actually do metabolic building. When for most of us that are just trying to lose a little weight, it's gonna require a caloric deficit throughout. Now, the one thing I like to do during a caloric deficit is pay a lot of attention to some warning signs. Are you snacking uncontrollably? Are you yawning all day? Are you irritable? Are, if you're getting to these places and you're not about to get on stage, well, this is a perfect time to take a controlled diet break. This is the perfect time to give yourself, say, a free meal. This is the perfect time to do some things to allow you to remain consistent through the process, okay? There is no one size fits all in this journey. If you are just after general weight loss, don't grind yourself into the ground. Take your time, there is no rush. The only time there would be a rush is if the stage is right in front of you and you're not quite lean enough. That's when we have to make decisions based on a date. Outside of that, this is a lifestyle. This is your life. This is the body and the mind that you're going to be living with for years to come. So do not be in a rush to reach a goal. If you go all out to reach a goal, what happens when you reach it? Most people just go back to their old ways. However, if you can sustain the fat loss because you understand things like diet breaks, reverse diet, how to do refeeds, things that allow you to feel better and keep the momentum, well then, the likelihood of sustaining the weight loss that you wanted to reach is much higher. In fact, sustaining weight loss after a diet, if it's a lifestyle approach, is really the only thing that makes sense because why else would you put yourself through all that only to put all the body fat back on? Understanding things like diet breaks, reverse dieting, these are what's gonna be the tools that we use to stay leaner after the diet is over. All right, guys, 
Well, that's going to be it for me today. It's Saturday. Got to keep it brief. Got a bunch of clients competing. Got to get to the gym. Really excited. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend, and I will talk to you tomorrow.